Okay, welcome back. This is uh, SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube live from San Fran uh, Las Vegas, not San Francisco. Getting the end of the day, Dave. Yeah. We were in San Francisco last week for Oracle Open World, but uh, we are here live at the Splunk Conference in Las Vegas. This is The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante. Hi, everybody. Matt Van Deventer is here. He's with uh, Trade Me, which is like the eBay. It is the eBay, really, of, uh, of, of New Zealand. Welcome. Thank you, thank we, you for having me. Good, you're very welcome. We were talking off camera about the, uh, the big race, you know, uh, <laughs> last week. <laughs> In America's San Francisco. Cup. Condolences, I'm a Red Sox fan. If you know anything about baseball, you know we've had our heart broken, so I'm sorry about that. But. Thank you, thank <laughs> you for your, we're, as I said, we're a nation in mourning, but. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, let's talk about Trade Me. Uh, you were telling me off camera that essentially eBay tried to get into New Zealand, but uh, you guys were there first. So let's go back. I mean, we're talking the, the halcyon days of the dot-com bubble, and you guys made it through. So when did you guys get started? Tell us the story of TradeMe. So TradeMe was founded uh, in 1999 by uh, a young man called uh, Sam Morgan, who was a, a consultant with Deloitte, and uh, saw the opportunity. Um, started, executed very, very well. Um, eBay came a couple of years later, um, pretty half-heartedly, it, it's, it's fair to say, and, uh, and we already owned the market, so they, uh, they disappeared. Um, and then uh, Sam uh, sold the company in 2006 to uh, Fairfax Media, a big Australian media conglomerate, for $750 million, um, which is a lot of money in New Zealand. Uh, a lot of money, lot of money yeah. yes, a lot of money <laughs> everywhere, I guess. Um, and then uh, a couple of years ago, uh, we IPO'd, and so we're, uh, we're independent again. We're a public listed company in New Zealand. Fantastic. Well, that's, a, that's quite a story. I mean, so eBay actually probably started in the U.S. before you guys launched. Yes. And, and but when they tried to get into the market, maybe they felt like, okay, we own this thing, and what happened? Why were you able to, to win? Um, so again, I think it comes down to, to good execution. So um, a, a, a local, um, locally owned and operated uh, uh, organization, um, New Zealanders like that. Um, it's uh, you know, the, the famous, one of the famous quotes from Sam is, um, you know, trade me's basically people buying things they've never seen from people they've never met. Um, and so doing that on an, on an American site is, is just feels, that, you know, it doesn't, doesn't feel quite right. Um, so yeah, I, th I think just really good execution. So it was that local flavor, and then obviously some of the other things that are important in your business are, you know, the reputation of, the, of both the buyer and the seller. How do you guys deal with that? So we have a, um, we have a feedback system, and uh, yeah, I mean, community is key. It's one of our, one of our core values is if we lose the, the trust of our members, then, um, you know, we, we've kind of lost everything. So we work really, really hard. We have. Um, about 30 people in our trust and safety team um, who uh, all they do is, is protect our members, look out for the bad guys, um, ban those guys from the site, and then we have about uh, 50 people in our customer service team who do, do the same thing. I saw that an iPhone, one of the gold iPhones, you know, the champagne ones, yeah. was sold on eBay like a couple weeks ago for $10,000. What's the b most bizarre thing you've ever seen that you can talk about sold on, on Trade Me? There are lots of weird and wonderful things. So the most viewed auction ever, I, I, I think it's certainly in the top three, um, was uh, a scary washing machine. So this is a, a student who put an ad up just with really, really good humor of a washing machine that made a, a very scary noise. And it got, it got, I think, like three million views, <laughs> sold for a, a, an insane amount of money. Um, the other really, really big one was, um, uh, I don't know if you guys heard, a couple of years ago we had a, a, a couple of really big earthquakes in Christchurch, yeah, pretty course. much uh, decimated the, the city, and there was a, a, a boulder, you know, the size of a, you know, the size of a truck that landed in someone's uh, uh, living room, um, and they sold the boulder yeah. on, on, uh, on Trade Me um, for, I think they got $25,000 for it. Really? Yeah. They barely covered the yeah, cost yeah. of the... Uh, but every little bit helps, I guess. Exactly. So, Matt, tell us about your infrastructure. Maybe, maybe paint a picture for us and how it's evolved over the last 10 years or so. Yeah, sure. So we're a, um, we're a Microsoft shop, so we're SQL Server and, uh, and, and .NET. Um, we um, run our own data centers. We have a data center in, uh, in, in Auckland and a data center in Wellington, and we run ActiveActive out of both of those. Um, and we do, um, on, a, on a good day, we do about 70 million page impressions um, and about 15 million API calls, um, and we have about uh, 700,000 people visiting the site on uh, on any given day, so we're at, we're, we're pretty big in the in the New Zealand space. Um, pretty lean team. Um, we have about uh, 19 people in infrastructure, and then about 50 developers. Um, and we uh, deploy to production twice a day. Um, 
about 40 to 50 changes go out onto the website every week. Um, so we, yeah, we, we keep pretty busy. And you protect your data, you said it's an active active from, from uh, the Auckland data center and the Wellington data center. Correct, yeah. Uh, with the exception of our, of our, um, our, we have three core master databases that are only live in one side at a time. And we move, uh, we move between Auckland and Wellington about four times a year just to make sure that we can actually do that. But all of our webs, all of our um, sort of read-only subscriber servers run active active out of both of those. Okay, and, and so tell us how you're using uh, Splunk. So um, I guess like a lot of people, the, the Splunk journey started for us with um, a, a, a syslog replacement. So we had a couple of syslog servers. We had a whole lot of very um, cumbersome and complex rules to alert people when, when bad things happened. And we decided that we needed to do something better. We, we jumped into Splunk. So that was a homegrown system? It was or? a homegrown system, yeah. Okay. Something that we rolled, uh, r rolled ourselves. Um, and then, yeah, I guess like a, like a lot of people, we, um, we just started seeing seeing a lot of value, um, being able to sort of correlate lots of really, really interesting events um, and, and get context around them as well. Um, we, we just sort of jumped up to throwing our web logs in there, throwing all our image logs in there, and, um, and probably the biggest thing that we, we now do that's the most exciting for us is, um, is the DB Connect app, which talks directly to our um, production databases. And what that enables us to do is, is give us context around, let's say, a number that is in a web log that's a, a listing ID rather than that, that just being a hit. You know, I know that that's someone looking at a four bedroom house for sale in Auckland. Um, and so being able to sort of provide that value to the business um, is, is where we're seeing incredible value. And that's why I'm very excited about, about Splunk 6 with being able to get our, um, our analysts actually helping themselves a little bit more than they do at the moment. Matt, one of the things that Dave and I talk about in the queue all the time is the, the collision between kind of old ways and new ways and, and um, you know, a lot of people are looking at Splunk right now, getting really excited. People who have a huge active fan base in terms of customers. And obviously with the, with the value proposition of Surge and Cloud and Enterprise Splunk 6, it really is a nice analytics BI package as well. But it really is integrates kind of in the bowels of the data center, logs to apps, right? And everything in between, which touches networks, yep. touches servers, app servers, all kinds of accelerators, all the converged infrastructure stuff that's going on that's being instrumented. So we know it's a nightmare. So I want to ask you, uh, from your perspective, what is, it that, what is it about Splunk that people get so excited about? That for the folks that are watching that might not know the ins and outs of Splunks, what, 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 are, what are the people most jazzed about and why is Splunk resonating so well with the people in the market today? I, I think for, for us it's the, it's the ease of being able to create the, the, the dashboards, the real-time searches. I mean, we had um, you know, one of our kind of um, uh, big moments with Splunk was about a year ago. We were having a, a, a bunch of um, a bunch of image issues. So we we have about 300 million live images on the site. Um, we get about seven images uploaded every second, and we serve about 10,000 image requests a second. Um, and uh, we, we were seeing performance problems, and we we didn't know where in the stack they were. If they're in the caching layer, the storage layer, we we threw all of that data into That's Splunk. It's a hunt and peck. Yeah, I mean, like, just go through files. Yeah, exactly. It was it was really really difficult, and we we threw all the, all the logs into Splunk. In an hour, we had a dashboard that pulled all of that stuff together and had you know, all of the you know, performance at every layer of the stack on a screen in the office right. that everyone could see. Yeah, you know, see all the expression, throwing the, everything in the, kitchen, in the kitchen sink at it, right? You, yeah. That's what you do with Splunk, you throw everything at Absolutely. it, and it just eats it up and takes it in and just... Yep. And then, and then it's, you know, it's the stuff that you didn't think you, know, you needed to know about, but then it's in Splunk and, and actually you do need to know about it. Yeah, you know, this is always the proposition of big data is that the value, the gold is in the data, right? Yeah. So if you can unlock the data, that seems to be the common thread of the past two years. If you can unlock the data, that's the key. Yeah. And, and, and how hard is it to get going? I mean, what's, what's, give, take, give us the, uh, the feel for what's it like to work with the Splunk technology. Um, for us, it was actually, it was really easy. I mean, I'm, I'm lucky I've got a, a bunch of really smart guys and girls in the, in the team. Um, and we just kind of took to it like ducks to water, so it was it was a really easy implementation for us. Um, you know, probably the biggest challenge was uh, was was licensing. You know, the, the more stuff you throw in it, the more it costs you. But. Cha-ching, yeah. But yeah. If, you, if you're making some money with it, then you know exactly. I mean, if you solve problems, you just do a trade-off. Hey, cost to solve the problem. Easy sell to the business because we're we you know we're getting so much value out of it uh, on kind of every level. So not it, just it in proves itself pretty quickly. Absolutely, the ROI comes in. Absolutely. I mean, not not a, you know not even on, a, on an operational level. It's it's helped us prevent problems. But now that we're delivering kind of business intelligence to to the organization, at some point people will start you know squeezing on the budget, but. 
you know, with all this greenfield opportunity with the apps, I mean, mobile's not going to be any issue either, a clean sheet of paper with a mobile. You're going to have a lot of new people on mobile, new exhaust with that too. Yeah, that's, um, mobile's huge for us, uh, like, like it is for everyone, so 40% of, uh, of all visits to, our, uh, to trade me are now on a mobile device, and we expect that to overca overtake desktop. Um, so 40% right year. now mobile penetration on your user base. 40%, yeah. How about the security side of it? So obviously Splunk has some security features. Um, can you speak about that at all? I mean, how does that relate to anything? I, I can't, yeah, so, so we use it for security. I can't really go into, into too many details. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, here's our blueprint, please you know, break our networks. And <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, you know, we're, you know, we're the biggest website in, in New Zealand by, by some measure, so we have, a, we have a pretty big target on our back. Um, so, uh, we, yeah. What kind of DDoS and what kind of attacks are you getting all the time? What's the level of security? Is your constant penetration? Um, people so, attacking it. So, so DDoS, um, you know, we, we had a we had a really big one last year, um, the biggest one we've we've ever had, um, which we were able to deal with um, quite effectively, and Splunk helped us with that. Um, the the bigger thing for us is um, is is people trying to um, scam the site. So um, phishing, you know, phishing, you know, those kinds of things. Um, people putting up fake listings. People overseas. Yeah, yeah. Craigslist know. has the same problem. Yeah, yeah. So. So what's the future for you in regarding this Splunk? I mean, where do you see this going? As you, as you look at the, uh, out, in the, out on the, the stair, out in the landscape going forward in the future, where do you see the business going from an infrastructure standpoint? Obviously mobile penetration is going to continue to grow um, and apps are going to be continue to proliferate. Uh, what's around the corner for tech or, and then Splunk? So the, the two biggest things uh, on the hit list for us are, are mobile, obviously, um, but, but um, you know, pure business intelligence. So being able to use the new tools in, in Splunk 6 and actually having, instead of my team doing all of that work, the analysts being able to actually drag and drop, create pivots, use the data models, use the analytics store, um, that, that's the really exciting thing. How much thing. SQL do you guys have in there? Uh, so we're at SQL Server, so, um, so we have a lot, so we use the DB Connect um, app, so we actually pull data out of SQL Server into Splunk to correlate with, uh, with with all of our other data. What's your take on the whole SQL, no SQL debate? Obviously, Splunk's a great example. Amar Awadal was just on talking about unstructured data and SQL with Impala. I mean, is, it, is this op are people overplaying this issue? You know, SQL for Hadoop, SQL for this. I mean, does it matter anymore? I mean, what's your take on all this? Oh, it's, it's, it's an interesting one. I mean, I, I don't know if you, if you saw, um, so Google have kind of announced their, uh, their F1 um, relational database uh, thing a couple of weeks ago. So they're, they're kind of going the other way now. Um, I, I think everyone thought NoSQL was going to be, you know, all things to all people. Developers love it. You know, it's easy. Um, it has its place. Um, it's a known so, market. You know, I mean. Yeah, I mean, we use Redis, but you're always you're always going to need a, you know, a, a transactional relation. You guys database. use Redis? Yes, we do. You yeah. like Redis? Love Redis. Good it's queuing, great. managing, yeah. real time queuing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we do too. We use it as well. Redis has been a big surprise for us, managing the real time data. It's just. Yeah, no, we jumped into jumped into that last year, and one of the things I just learned about that uh, I, I didn't know about before I came here was that there's a there's a, a Redis Splunk app, so you can actually talk to Redis directly and uh, and get some of that data out. Any so Node uh, Node JS on the mobile app at all? No, Not no, yet. no. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a we have an internal battle, uh, native versus uh, web, and I, I won't bore you no, with the details. Tell us, <laughs> you know, I want to know. Always good to get under the hood. We love doing that on the queue. It's kind of like, you know, get in and play with the engine. Okay, so the final question for you is, um, um, what do you think about the conference, I mean, here? I mean, pretty, is this your first time here? Or? Uh, it's my first time at, at Splunk Conference. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's amazing just being able to go around and, and, and talk to the guys who, who just know the stuff. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty exciting. A lot of, lot of sessions I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to, so. You think the enterprise cloud is going to be pretty interesting for folks out there? What's your take on that? Kind of uh, it, it's, it's, it's not going to work for us, um, and that's... Well, you guys need a different package. You get an on prem Yeah, and, and, and also business. just we have this thing uh, that we call the tyranny of distance, which is there's one internet cable that connects New Zealand to the rest of the world. Um, so everything, you know, we need everything to be domestic because, yeah. you know, the, the faster our site is, the more money we make. Um, and if we do stuff um, offshore in AWS or, or, or anywhere, yeah. its latency is just too high. Um, so we have to sort of consider those kinds so of things. So it's more of a business model issue as well. So what's the percentage of traffic outside the country? Oh, 2%. So you're yeah. all in country. Yeah, we're all in country, yeah. Okay. Uh, Dave, what do you think about uh, the this, this Splunk security thing? I mean, you, you heard from Amar Awadal, you heard from the Department of Energy. What's your take on it? Well, you know, we've talked on theCUBE a lot, John, about security being a, a do-over, um, given the amount of data growth, uh, the, the new access patterns, cloud, virtualization, and I think 
you know, tools like Splunk, Splunk are part of the do-over. Um, I don't know, Matt, how you feel about this, but you know, security's changed a lot in the last you know, 10 years, even the last five years. The, 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 the threat matrix has changed, the, the way in which the bad guys behave has changed, and so the whole, the back-end processes have, have, have had to change dramatically. So I got to believe that Splunk helps compress uh, the cycle and the speed at which you can respond and just identify threats. Um, no, a, a, absolutely, I mean, it's an arms race, right? And, um, and f for us, you know, the, the real-time search capabilities of Splunk, you know, really put us one step ahead. Um, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure there'll be something coming around the corner that will, you know, I mean, we'll have to change stuff, but that's just that's the way it is, you know? Anything that you want to see them do that uh, would make your life better? Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, look, I'm, 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 I'm a pretty happy customer, to be honest. <laughs> it's a great, great product, Splunk 6, very excited about. Can't wait to, uh, to, to get the upgrade. Have you uh, downloaded done. it? Yeah, we're on the beta program, so yeah. we've been running it for, for a while, just not in production, but, um, right. but yeah, lo looking forward to upgrading production now that it's... Uh, now that it's released. Awesome. Matt, well, great story uh, and uh, you know, wonderful entrepreneurial uh, rise and a fantastic exit, now a public company. Trade me, really appreciate you coming on theCUBE. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, we'll be right back with our next guest. This is theCUBE live in Las Vegas for the Splunk Conference. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. This is theCUBE extracting the signal from the noise. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>